ABC reporter John Carl poured some cold water on the Mueller investigation. This is fascinating. Take a look at this. This is all building up to the Mueller report and raising expectations of a bombshell report. And there have been expectations that have been building, of course, for over a year on this. But people who are closest uh, to, to what Mueller has been doing, who have interacted with the special counsel, caution me that this report is almost certain to be anticlimactic. That if you look at what the FBI was investigating in that New York Times report, look at what they were investigating, Mueller did not go anywhere with that investigation. He has been writing his report in real time through these indictments, and we have seen nothing from Mueller on the central question of was there any coordination, collusion, with the Russians in the effort to meddle in the elections? Or was there even any knowledge on the part so, of the president or anybody in his campaign with what the Russians were doing? They haven't There's laid that no out yet in the indictments, but how do things like the Trump Tower meeting with Russians, Don Jr., uh, Paul Manafort, Paul Manafort giving polling data to Ukrainian oligarchs, the pursuit of a Trump Tower in Moscow, how does that fit into this theory? We, we, what we've certainly seen over and over again is that people around the president, first of all, have been willing to lie to investigation investigators and had their own dealings with Russians, had their own uh, agendas with Russians. Manafort was trying to get paid for, for, for his work on, on behalf of Ukraine. Uh, Flynn had his own dealings. Uh, but, but it is not added up to anything of the central question again, was there anybody, was the Trump campaign aware of or coordinating with the Russians in their effort to meddle with the election so far? There's been nothing on that and I'm led to believe, don't expect there's going to be Senator anything. Wow. <laughs> so that's not me talking. That's uh, John Carl, ABC reporter, who has sources involved in the Mueller investigation. I mean, <clears throat> here's here's my breakdown of the whole investigation. And it honestly, it's the same as it's been for 95% of the time the investigation was going on. When the investigation originally launched, I said you're not going to find treason. You're not going to find collusion. Um, that didn't happen. That's not going to be there. And it's honestly silly that we're even having the conversation, never mind launching an investigation over it. Um, but the Mueller investigation became real as a heart attack when the articles started pouring in about how Mueller expanded it beyond the question of treason or collusion, and it just became an investigation into... Donald Trump's financial dealings and his businesses. And I mean, from that day forward, I maintain that the Mueller investigation was serious, real, and important, and he's going to find a lot of crimes. In fact, I think he's going to dig up money laundering. I think he's going to dig up various financial crimes. Um, and my prediction is, whenever Donald Trump is no longer president, he's going to be indicted. And I don't know the specific crimes he's going to be indicted on, but I think he's going to. I think there are going to be multiple indictments because he's guilty of many crimes in his businesses. I don't even think that's really that tough of a question. There's just so much evidence there of money laundering at his Panama hotel, dealings with the mafia in New York, um, among a bunch of a bunch of other shady stuff. He stiffed so many of his workers. I mean, there were there was endless rounds of reporting on that where they had the specific business people who said it. And here's a guy who he definitely got financing from sketchy sources. And he definitely, uh, I think, committed at least a dozen uh, crimes in regards to his businesses, tax evasion. I mean, you name it. There, there's a lot of there there. But. The, the main point remains, if you're looking for treason or if you're looking for collusion, I don't think you're going to find it. <laughs> I don't think you're going to find it because, and, and here's, here's the main point, which I have, it, it, nobody can refute this because it's just, it's ironclad fact that the overwhelming majority of the policies that Trump has done in regards to Russia have been hawkish policies and they've been escalations. And you can't override that fact. Like, so in other words, if he were to be a Putin puppet, as many people say, 
And he actually did commit treason and collusion, and he's working for Putin, as many people actually believe. Well, then he is l literally the worst puppet of all time. Because, like, for example, we've sent uh, warships, U.S. warships, to the Black Sea, right by Russia's border. We've escalated. Trump has been trying to tank Europe's oil deal with Russia, and he's been basically using diplomatic pressure in order to have Europe buy oil from the U.S. and not from Russia. So he's trying to tank a Russian oil deal with Europe, which again is the opposite of what a fucking Putin puppet would do. There's the NATO buildup on Russia's border. That's the opposite of what a, a Putin puppet would do. I mean, yeah, there's a handful of things where... Um, I think it's mutually beneficial to both parties, Russia and the United States. Like, for example, drawing down in Syria is something I've always supported, and Trump said on the campaign trail he supported drawing down in Syria. And now we are having a drawdown to an extent in Syria, although he might privatize and send some people back in, but that's a longer conversation. But you could point to a handful of policies that are beneficial to both the United States and Russia that Trump has pursued, but most of the policies have actually been the opposite where we've escalated with Russia. And so he's he would be a shitty puppet if he was a puppet. And I don't, nobody could talk their way around the fact that a puppet would have to be working at, where every policy that he pursues would benefit Vladimir Putin. And that's just objectively not the case. So many of what he so much of what he's done has been the opposite. And it's been against Vladimir Putin's interests. So, I, I, I see it's inescapable to me that you're not going to get him on treason. You're not going to get him on collusion. It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. He's not working for fucking Russia. And that's a silly notion. It's like, it's like, it's like liberal Benghazi, you know? Like, oh, uh, we're going to get him. I swear we're going to get him one day. Obama's going to be dragged out in handcuffs and Hillary's going to be dragged out in handcuffs because of Benghazi. They ordered the stand down and they wanted our troops to die. Like, that's the, that's the level of silliness that we're at here with the idea of, like, he's working for Russia, he did treason, he did collusion. But again, don't, like, I don't want people to take my comments on that realm of the Mueller investigation to be indicative of my broader feelings on the Mueller investigation. Because as I've said repeatedly, I, su I support the Mueller investigation because I think that um, you can easily get Donald Trump on legit financial crimes and he can be indicted the day he steps down from... Uh, from being president, the day he's no longer president anymore. Now, some people might say, well, wait, why wouldn't you just indict him as he's president? Well, because that's it. most legal scholars, most legal experts would say, you cannot indict a sitting president. That's not a thing that's allowed under our Constitution. What's allowed is impeaching a sitting president. And um, I don't know if there's enough there there where they will impeach him, nor do I know if it's politically a smart move for the Democrats to go about doing that, but I do think Donald Trump will be indicted the day he steps down for a number of financial crimes. But here, I don't want the, the Democratic partisans to, like, be let down by this idea because it's really weird that they've gone all in with the most extreme version of the Mueller thing, where it's like, well, if he's not guilty of fucking treason or collusion, then why are, what are we, what are we doing? Like, they want that part to be true. They want, like, the most extreme version of the conspiracy to be accurate. And I just don't think it is. So it's almost like they'd be let down if, let's say, Trump loses in 2020, he's no longer president, and then he gets actually indicted on a number of financial crimes... Like, I feel like a lot of these people might still be let down because they're like, but he didn't, they didn't get him on treason and they didn't get him as being Putin's puppet and collusion, so it's not enough. N no, that's enough. You got him on fucking a really important, like, to get him on financial crimes is gigantic. So I think there's a lot of there there with the financial crimes, but you're not going to get him on the most ambitious uh, charges and the st strongest version of events and of the conspiracy. And again, th that's not really me saying it. You just heard it from John Carl, who has sources working on the Mueller investigation. So maybe that'll open a lot of people's eyes, but I don't know. We'll see.